So, we're here, Mark. Welcome back. Um, uh, this is our third podcast. We've done one on uh, the Emma Semler case, which got a lot of uh, feedback. So I'm still sad over the whole thing. We did um, kind of an easier one on interventions, important but easier and a little shorter. This one we've kind of been, uh, I didn't want to lead out with this one because it's probably going to be kind of brutal. Um, but we're going to do, today's podcast is going to be about, really it centers on Suboxone. It's about medication-assisted treatment, but we're not really looking to cover the pros and cons of medicated assistant treatment. <laughs> Mark and I really want to talk about the cons of Suboxone usage, but we're going to talk about um, uh, about that aspect of medication assisted treatment as the two main, and John, you let me tell you who I'm here with. So I'm Richie Hessian. Oh, this thing can be found. This podcast, apparently I have to tell this every time, is available on the major streaming platforms, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Richie H, the other side or something like that, whatever we're yeah, called. The other side with Richie H. Um, so, um, and I want to tell you who we're here with. So I'm Richie H. And then we've got Mark Bonani and... Mark is an outreach coordinator at Bluecrest, and then we've got John Kikowski. John is, I can tell everybody who you actually course, are, right? Yeah, of course. So John <laughs> is a formerly licensed um, uh, pharmacist who, let's be honest, John, you had some problems, yeah. and uh, he kind of <laughs> lost, <laughs> he might have lost his license a little bit, Just a little bit. <laughs> um, but now he's recovered for some years, and um, uh, getting, and, and again, a separate topic conversation but a really good program that they did put into place you were the first person um that actually entered into that program and thank god for these programs in the state of new jersey because any normal you know normal person people who outside the understanding of the addiction world would look at somebody like john who got caught up in addiction crossed the line was sneaking meds out of his whatever out of the cvs wherever the hell he worked and um they would say like you know off of his head and that's all the John's a rock star and cares more about these people than than any pharmacist or even medical profession personally that I've I've met and sat down with and um, has done a total 180. His life is like astounding. And he runs, he's a supervisor and he runs Cornerstone Residence, um, sober residences, and he's about to get, hopefully, if the board's watching, he more than deserves getting his license back, way more than deserves it. And he's on the path to getting that. And John is super smart and he's very well educated and he understands addiction, understands medication assisted treatment unbelievably well. We're lucky to have you sitting in and talking on the podcast. Um, and if any of the stuff that I just said you want cut out, we can cut it out for you later on in case you're, but you know, we, we wear it all. We just throw it all out there, man. It is what it is. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about, um, about Suboxone, um, uh, mainly and subs, you know, Mark and I have like a big thing. You know what? We can, we're going to be stream of consciousness is what we always are. We're going to jump around topic to topic around subs. Um, but we get infuriated, right? Because a sub Suboxone is not a curative Neither is Vivitrol. There is no medication that can cure you of addiction that I've ever heard of that I'm unaware of. Science may one day accomplish this, but it hasn't done so, hasn't yeah. done so yet. Um, so, the but there are the good topic. tools that they've come up with, right? And so medication-assisted treatment as a tool. And even the guys, you know, we had watched some of the clips from when you went to that with the attorney general and they have, you know, we, there's panels everywhere now. All the politicians want to talk about it and everyone comes up and all of a sudden a lot of people become semi-experts on, on addiction treatment apparently. And, you know, some people seem to be the, under the illusion, in my opinion or my personal experience, it's an illusion that Suboxone is some curative. I mean, certainly if you're into harm reduction, Suboxone is definitely a curative of sorts, right? I mean, yep. crime statistics can go down and, right. you know, it keeps people, you know, it's the old methadone experiment re revisited, right? I mean, wouldn't you say? Yeah, 100%. And the thing that I disagree most with all of it, and I might as well put this out in the beginning, is that not that it doesn't have its place in treatment of addictions for opiate addiction, but that, and I see it repeatedly said in article after article after article, that is, it is the gold standard of treatment. That's my problem. The problem isn't that it's used because it's got its use cases in all forms, even sometimes maintenance. I think we can agree for the, for a certain population, but now that we're pushing it as the gold standard, the yeah. go-to. Yeah, the and, thing that's and, going and, and to solve the opioid epidemic. And, and they're trying to, and they're also, by the way, marijuana now all of a sudden is supposedly, oh, in state, it's totally in insane state. that marijuana is going to help cure opiate addiction is, 
I, I, just, I can't even imagine people say that out loud. It's it's astounding to me, but we're not, I'm going to try and stay away from the marijuana. We're going to have a whole separate podcast right. on the marijuana That's thing. Good. But not only, yeah, gold standard, true, they want to incorporate it where they want to try and force treatment facilities of all ilk to mandatory that you have medication-assisted treatment. Now, if you tell me mandatory, we're big proponents at our place. We do um, Vivitrol. It's a good tool. It's not a curative, you know, but it's a great tool. Early recovery. Why tool. is Vivitrol, John? Why is Vivitrol a great early recovery tool? Well, there, there's so Vivitrol is great because the fact that you can use it. It's, it's number one. It's very easy to use for uh, somebody who is off opiates. You can start them off on a tablet. Um, you can work with uh, insurances. They'll you know pay for it. it. There's more acceptance of it today. The 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 thing with Vivitrol is also that it decreases cravings. So if you look at the studies that are associated with it, it can decrease cravings, which is very very high, usually in early recovery, usually one to one to three months, one to six months. Um, and basically, if somebody tries to use while they're on Vivitrol, it will block it. So there so is, it's a blocker. It's a complete so antagonist. If, if, a heroin ag- if a heroin addict yes. gets a Vivitrol shot when they're leaving rehab is the most ideal time to give right. it to them, right? Typically, the process that we, as I understand or it jail. is- or jail, or, well, yeah. and we're going to talk about that, but um, typically for us, we'll we'll give somebody, they'll go on naltrexone for a few days to a week to make sure that they don't have any adverse reaction to right. it. Also, you have to have your liver levels checked, yep. right, because it also passes through the liver, or you understand yeah, this yeah, better yeah, than yeah. I do, but we have to make sure that their liver can accept that type Correct. of a shot and that it'll process appropriately. Yep. Once we see that after the first few days, now, if this is done right by each of the treatment facilities, if you're a proponent of Vivitrol, you'll prepare them to, to for their graduation when they're going to leave and then you'll give them the naltrexone and then they'll get their shot right. and then they go out into the world and basically for 28 days yes for 28 days they can't get high and they can go buy heroin and they can shoot it intravenously it won't get them high and then they can do another shot and it's still not going to get tried them high. it didn't work and, <laughs> and that's and that's that's an important point because what's the the biggest thing right so we have some other medications that are used for let's say for alcoholism right one of them is antabuse so if you take this antabuse if you drink, you'll throw up, right? So there's this negative conditioning, violently ill. Right? Violently Ill. So with Vivitrol, once you get the shot, you're covered for 28 days. Right. So you talk about med compliance. Med compliance is very important because if you're giving a pill, you have to take something daily, but sure. it's ingrained in your head. If I don't take this pill, I can get high. So at least with the Vivitrol, you have now a more positive med uh, med compliance yeah, with it. Yeah, for 27 days. Right. And that's yeah. the and right. let's let's call that what it is, right? right? If I'm an addict and I'm not See, this is where everyone is in agreement or at least from what they say when I hear all the panels and all the different experts talking about it and all the politicians are talking about it. One thing they do throw in is that it's not just the medication assisted treatment you give, you also need the accompanying uh, psychosocial services. Yes. And yes. they all say that and they're 100% correct yes. and the truth is you know, Vivitrol parents, I'll tell this to parents, if any of them are watching the podcast, if you think that just getting your kid a Vivitrol shot and they're good, you know, go back to college and, and live your life normal. What happens is on day 23, I'm making this up, they start thinking, hmm, you know, I got the shot set up on the 27th day or the 28th day, but, you know, maybe now again, I'll throw this out there as well. Really, you should set the shot up the on the third week. You should be day 21 or 22. That way, if anything happens where you can't get there, the doctor can't be there, there's an issue with the train system or a power outage, if you leave it to the 27th day and they can't go for three more days, guess what? That's a window where they can actually be getting high and it will no longer be blocking. So we try and do it a little earlier just in case because it can it can it can it can bridge like it doesn't Correct. have to be exactly you can do it a week earlier um but then they'll they start thinking on day 23 about you know maybe i won't go get that shot and once that that's why the other you know the actual treatment work that you have to do to get yourself and your mind to shift so you can be taken beyond where you are and that urge or that thought to go do the thing that you know is going to destroy everything for you, which is what people don't understand about addiction. Like, why would anybody do that? Uh, Why would they can't not do it? And the mind kicks in and they start thinking and they minimize and they start thinking this time it's going to be different and I don't need these shots and blah, blah, blah. And on day 27, they cancel the appointment and on day 28 or day 29, they're out there and they're getting high all over again. Vivitrol is not a curative 
But for those 27 days, that gives them 27 days where they know they're not going to be able to get high anyway. Let's do some work. Right. Psychosocial services. Yeah. That's where the other 12-step work or the counseling work or whatever it is that you're doing to try and get recovered. You've got 27 days right. that you'll be all right. And, and I, I just want to highlight for that. For opiates. For opiates. For opiates. We'll, we'll go there. Yeah, but yeah. Let's, we'll go there in a second. Yeah. But yeah. I want to highlight that, too, because if you look at basically how the uh, opioid epidemic is being sensationalized in the media, all we hear about is addiction, addiction addiction there's no mental health piece right so that is that also comes with the counseling where addiction and mental health counseling or treatment or whatever has to come hand in hand so we're very focused on addiction treatment even in the prison systems in the jails but the mental health system isn't great it's it's not good at all we're just focusing on the uh addiction piece now it's great if we can have people if they're you know receiving vivitrol and they're going to treatment simultaneously get that mental health as Richie had mentioned, Vivitrol is by no means a curative. It is just a, a tool in, of many tools in a toolbox. And this is not something that you just give and boom, you're cured and that's it. It's an ongoing process and it's an ongoing process with you might need medication for mental health for if there's depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder. You know, what is the real reason why somebody is using um, specifically opiates or whatever the case is? And having Vivitrol in that toolbox is great, but it's also not. Yeah, you got you have to get down to causes and conditions. Yeah, bottom line, Absolutely. what's underneath. Right. And then and then the caveat to it, which is what Mark was alluding to, which is so true, is, you know, it's not a curative in other ways because we know we see it happen all the time. People get Vivitrol and they can't get they can't get high in heroin. So guess what they do? Well, crack. Crack cocaine. Yeah. They just get high on coke or they get crack or they smoke pot or they drink. Or yep. It's not going to it's not a blocker for any of that. No, right. No, so. Right. Um, you know, there's an argument that you can get Vivitrol and it'll actually also help control your cravings for alcohol and Correct. for other things. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I, I can tell you that we see people that when they're on Vivitrol, they they go and they start and doing I've other things. I've been drugs. on naltrexone before. And I've drank and I've smoked. Well, that's why I, want, I wanted you on this podcast, Mark, because in case now, John, I don't know if you know Mark's story. And Mark yeah. gets mad. Mark's like, I never did that. And I, you know, I remember it different from back when he was a kid. But I did not when, <laughs> dig it when out. he was 20, <laughs> right. he got those blockers. You know, how you have the, they used to have the surgery where right, they right, inserted right. the, yeah, yeah. and John took it. And my, he took a kitchen knife at his mom's house and tried that's to very dig common. And pull the, People take the implants out. It's I good. Mean, the I had the removing implants. your own Horrible. implants. I know. That's insane. Yeah. He had four different implants done. Mark's been there, done that, done it all when it comes to... So we talked about Vivitrol a little bit, which I wanted to, because we're I'm a big proponent of Vivitrol as a tool. That's how we use it while we do the other work that can actually help you to recover from alcoholism and addiction. Now we move on to the main thing, which is Suboxone, right? And so I'll start off by telling just an interesting story, and it just shows our mindset of it. So Mark and I were on, and this is one thing that you always like to say, and it's so true, and so I bring it up all the time. You know, you're out, and, and so we were on some, we were at one of the one of the events, one of the addiction symposiums, wherever we're at, and we were walking around, we were engaging and talking to people, and we started talking to some doctor, and this guy was a big proponent for Suboxone, mm -hmm. right? And he was telling Mark, and he and Mark and I are talking to him, nice guy, he was very well educated, and he was like, you know, Suboxone's not a drug. He said Suboxone, and he goes into Mark and I, all the benefits of, for Suboxone and long-term usage and whatever, and so Mark was like, I'm sorry, did you say that Suboxone is not a drug? And the guy's like, well, I mean, it doesn't get you high. And Mark said, really? It doesn't get you high? And so Mark said, I'm guessing you've never taken Suboxone before. And the guy's like, well, no, I've never taken. Mark said, well, I would posit to you. You didn't say it that way. That's how what I would have said. But you basically said to him, well, I'll tell you that if you took just one milligram strip of Suboxone and I gave it to you now and you ate it, Within 20 minutes, you'd fall on the floor. You wouldn't be able to get up or move. You'd be wasted beyond belief. Probably couldn't even talk, and you'd be high for 12 hours. Itching, How's that? Scratching, not itching, scratching, maybe even throw up the way you would on heroin. That's not a drug, and it doesn't get you high. It makes, it makes no sense. But a lot of the guys that are out there talking about it, they don't know. They have no idea. They don't know what it is that these these folks are on. If, an, if a regular person or somebody who's, what do you call it, heroin naive or opiate naive, takes one of those... It's your lights out, man. Yeah, your milligram for kind. milligram. I think I've read uh, thirty milligrams of oxycodone is equivalent to one milligram of suboxone. Is that? Would you agree? Uh, it's a very strong drug. I mean, just by nature, uh, super potent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just think about it this way. So, if if somebody is on opioids, right, and like let's say they're high, right, and they're going in to get suboxone, you know, they have to be in withdrawal to get that suboxone. And the reason is, is because suboxone is so strong, it actually goes into the receptor. Yeah, it's a binder. It's stronger, right? You yeah, it kicks off the existing opioid. Now, while it kicks off that existing opioid, what is happening is that the 
the patient is in withdrawal because the, the receptors are clear. It takes a little bit of time for the suboxone to kind of shimmy its way in there. And it doesn't so fit the puzzle it doesn't fit perfectly. It, no, so it's, it's not a full agonist. Yeah, so it's, it's a mixed agonist and antagonist. And by, by agonist, yeah. it, it basically will activate, it will get you high. And antagonist, meaning that it will basically block other opiates and displace other opiates. So that's where the mixed nature of uh, suboxone comes in, uh, of being an agonist and antagonist. So, um, and, you know, again, outside of like the treatment industry, there's so many aspects of this and who uses subs and long term. Like I get the, the need for long term. And that's why I say this whole thing is stream of consciousness because everything leads to something else. I mean, in the end of the day, these are, John and Johnson's had a, they have so many of these drug panels now and opioid conferences and symposiums. And so, you know, we're at one of them and I go and John's there and John does all the stuff. He's in the reentry program, McGreevy's reentry program um, for prisoners coming back out of prison, which we're going to talk about in a second as well. And so John's had these things and I'm looking at it and you see, and I'm not going to mention the politician's name, but there were one of the local politicians, a, a New York guy, New, you know, New Jersey guy. Mm. And he was up there and he was touting these unbelievable benefits of Suboxone, how it's a curative. And of course, they love it in and of itself. And so do all the sheriffs. And I get it. So I'm not lost on me. I, I'm, I, I see the benefit for crime reduction because you do. You see crime reduction. You see harm reduction overall. And people's big thing is like, oh, well, he went back to work and, and now he's showing up for his kids and picking them up from school. And yeah, I guess that's good. If that's as best as you think the guy's ever going to be while it lasts until he goes back out and he gets high again. But anyway, we're at these symposiums and you hear these politicians and they're touting these unbelievable benefits. And then you look and you see all the signs all over and you see in this amazing lunch, a beautiful, beautiful conference that they put on with this great food and all that. And then you see the little fine print, you know, uh, paid for by such and such pharmaceutical company that is a maker of Suboxone. I mean, come on, guys. Are you kidding me or what? And they're out there. It's like an ad campaign. Mark and I would just read in the Associated Press, some lady, the author was Lauren Neergard, and it was their health and science department. And they basically put out this piece, and I'm paraphrasing, and you can go look it up or whatever, and I'm not calling anybody out on anything particular, but just it's just this particular article said something to the effect of that subs and methadone are really just very weak opioids. And she kind of marginalized what they I'll are. Show you. Yeah, That's he could show you the article. Yeah. But this, is what they, this, this comes from the, uh, the Associated <laughs> Press Health and Science Department. Right, right, right. And they're literally saying this. It's almost like a big campaign. Now, and we right. all know what's going on, right? And I love their studies. The studies they're doing. Oh, we're doing studies. And but one lady, John, who you actually like, what's her name? Nora what? You Volkoff. You know she's the national drug czar, essentially, in the United States, right? I'll like, tell you now, she's, she's doing amazing. Stu- she's doing I've read a lot of her right, stuff. Right. She's astounding. Right. And she does a lot of these studies. And what was the uh, what was the study that she was, she was positing that? They're going to do a study on successful, longer-term, MAT specifically on suboxone uh, maintenance and how their brain is repairing because we know that opiates and opiate abuse changes the wiring of the brain and brain chemicals and all that stuff. And so they're thinking the theory is that people stabilized on long-term suboxone, that their brain is going to repair itself. I don't really understand. Well, you said it it's going to literally repair the pl- uh, pleasure. Um, the pleasure pathways. The pleasure pathways yeah, yeah, yeah. is what she's that somehow intimating. They're now again, and that's why they were saying here. And the she's journal, a rock the line star. Is, she, the lady Nora is a rock star. Right. Dude. She knows more than I'll ever know about the science behind any right. of this. And all three she's, of us yeah, put she's together. A doctor. She's a man. She's an amazing doctor, yeah. and she's really very helpful to the addiction community. It's just an interesting. And I'm not suggesting that Nora is is right. funded by drug companies. She's in this game for real. And if there is a way to show that it would actually, I'm 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 open minded. The problem is there's the science versus what we see. Like, uh, you know, we're, we're, right. I'm a yo-yo, right? Like we, we see, Absolutely. you know, I'm, 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 what I'm talking is kitchen table logic, right? Like right. I, I see what I see every day dealing with this stuff for 22 years, not in a scientific capacity, but dealing with addicts and watching the reality of what happens versus what some of these, you know, Believe their hypotheses what own, are. What I see. Yeah. Believing what I see on a yep. day-to-day, year-over-year and, year and we know people who've been on long-term Suboxone maintenance. And how many people have we had to come into our rehab where we get the call where the drug that they're looking to get off of is Suboxone? 
and they're hooked on it too and many. they don't want to live on it anymore and they, they want to get, get off, off of it, yeah. the withdrawal is insane. If you've ever, if you know anything about heroin withdrawal and you know better than most heroin withdrawal, <laughs> how many times did you withdraw on heroin even in jail? On the floor of a jail, you hear the story all the time because they don't have it and they're puking and shredding everywhere and blah, blah, blah. And just the everyone else who's in the cell with you, they hate your guts because Hot, you're cold, for five yeah. days you you're a mess. A oh my God. And now that's, but that's just, that's heroin. Or oxycodone, right? Or oxycodone. But now you look at subs, the half life of subs, right? I no, mean, half life it? is insane, and even with methadone too. Forty-two, seventy-two hours. Yeah, it could, it could like be t- it could be twenty-four to thirty-six, dep- yeah. and depending on the uh, the uh, uh, patient that's on it, you know, depending on their system, but it could be about a day. So you're looking at withdrawals. You know, heroin could be four to seven, very intense days. But Suboxone, it, they say, oh, it's weaker. It's still intense, oh, but yeah, it's, it's for it's much less intense. Me- but for it can be it's still intense. Yeah, it's a much time. longer, much right. longer. I know people that didn't feel what right for six months. No, absolutely. And, and keep in mind, when right. people first come in, the one of the things that keeps them from seeking treatment in the first place is they don't want to be sick. Right. They know what that's going to look like, yeah. and they do not want to walk down that that road. They just they know how it makes you feel. Subs are even worse. It's very hard to come off of subs once you're on it. Again, it leads into, and, and, and again, we can go in so many paths, but you know, we're talking about the pharmaceutical companies and how right. the pharmaceutical companies are, there was just a lawsuit settled, $1.4 billion dollar settlement, right? $1.4 billion. $1.4 billion. The um, largest ever and, so far. And what was the nature of what was the nature of the of the false suit? and misleading marketing practices, basically, right. and, and and also that it's uh, not addictive for creating and, an army of marketers to get out and to yes. get more doctors to write more prescriptions. Right. That it's not addictive and it's not abusable and it's not divertible. Yeah, and it's what I tell people all the time. And their ad campaign is successful. Right. So, They'll pay the one point four billion. They're going to make a lot more than that on the back end. First of all, of and course. second of they all, pay, it's, they it's, pay that one point four billion without even blinking an eye. N- blinking yeah, an they've eye. Done they, to they'll they'll right. take. Yeah, absolutely. They've done enough to already get the masses to believe that this is the solution. Sure. So yeah. every level of government, doctors, they all believe care. They all think that this is the answer, yeah. and they're all willing to write it and, and prescribe it. Right. And Absolutely. Then you got doctors that are making a, a business out of it, charging two fifty to their clients yeah. once a month. You know, one hundred and sixty clients, I think, is the law. Right? They can only treat one hundred and sixty people. Yeah. So it's two hundred bucks to two fifty for the appointment every month. They have to come back to go to their legal drug dealer in a lab coat. That's forty, yeah. fifty thousand a month yeah. for that doctor that now, runs it. No, I mean, there's just like you said, so many directions to go. No question. But now I'm also going to point out that subs aren't all negative and evil either. Now there's a couple of different things that I would put out there on for positives on Suboxone, right? Because we let's not. I'm not going to ignore the possible benefit because if it was used as a tool. It can be used helpfully as a tool, like in the detox process. Right. Sometimes miracle. when people are... Miracle drug in detox. There you go. In detox, yeah. a miracle drug, right? And then people who are longer-term users, sometimes out of detox, they still need help with withdrawal management. And so they'll go on subs where they'll come out of detox and that last is a two milligram. Maybe for a couple of more weeks, they need to do one, 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 half, 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 yeah. you know, and Correct. they'll work them down off of it so right. it kind of helps again, with the withdrawal. So let's stop right there. So now we got a person with substance use disorder. Or, or addiction, right? I don't really love the new substance use disorder term. That's right, just right. for me. Who's got a problem, displays a problem with chemicals. And we're going to send them home with a highly addictive and counter to what that article says, a strong opiate. And we're going to expect them to follow protocol. Yeah. The nature of the disease of addiction is I cannot sure. follow protocol. Yeah. And the reason we do that is because the insurance company will not pay more than seven days. That's the most you're going to get. Usually it's five for the heroin addict, seven for alcohol. But you're not going to, the insurance company is not going to pay to have someone. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is an issue, Listen, by the way. you've had a drug problem for 20 years. Take this script home and take it as directed. <laughs> as yeah. directed, yeah. Like, like this is I mean, it change. doesn't even no, no, it make sense. Yeah, right, 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 right. When we talk about that, the, the market, the $1.4 billion, it's only my experiences. That's all I can talk about, that it's not abusable. So nine years ago, I'm addicted to heroin, and I get on the internet, and I buy in some box on the street, and I'm going to kick on my own. And I'm reading stuff on the internet. And I tell this story a lot of times to a lot of different people, too. I'm like, I wonder if you can inject this stuff. And so I go on like these chats. These it's, a chat. normal, it's a normal thing to consider. I wonder if what I can I do that. that. I know that's right? that's And so yeah, yeah. everybody question. says, if you inject this stuff, I mean, it's got naloxone, it's two, two milligrams. It's two, two milligrams of naloxone, eight milligrams of buprenorphine in, in each strip. Right. And the two milligrams of the naloxone is there, so you cannot snort or shoot the stuff. Right. But I'm like, let me go on. So I go on a drug forum online. You can find a wealth of bad information on there. But I'm reading stuff, and, and people are saying, you can... 
can snort it, you can inject it, and nothing will happen. Right. So here you have the drug company side saying you can't do it, and it's going to kick you into immediate withdrawals, which I've been in precipitated withdrawals before. Yeah. They are the worst. And I'm like, well, that's what they're saying. But these guys on the internet chat forum are saying I can shoot it. You know what? I'm going to roll the dice because that's how nuts I am. Right. And so I shoot it, and nothing happens. I don't get, But I don't get dope sick. And I feel a little better. And I got a problem with needles just like I got a problem with heroin. And now I'm shooting Suboxone. Then I'm sniffing Suboxone. Right. And so the whole idea, like what they don't talk about is even that little two milligrams of naloxone they put in there is also a lie. Naloxone is the same stuff as Vivitrol. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if you don't yeah. know that. And so they put that in there to make it, to, initially I think what, what the idea was that that was the part that makes it not abusable. What they don't tell you is just like it's a stronger binder to the brain opiate receptors in the brain, uh, buprenorphine is than heroin. Buprenorphine is stronger than even naloxone. So it will not, it has no effect. It's in there, it does literally nothing. So the naloxone that's supposed to make it not abusable has no chance the buprenorphine outcompetes for the receptors and kick and keeps even uh, uh, the, the naloxone off the receptors. So it's yeah. like, and they're out there pushing stuff that's not, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's, yeah, I mean, that's can't. something we, we definitely learned about in school in the, the Narcan, uh, the naloxone, which is the same crap. It's in Narcan. Um, will counteract the, uh, you know, the, the abuse potential for snorting or injecting. But ever since I've been working in treatment, I hear stories of it, and I don't hear people saying, oh, I was in withdrawal from shooting that Suboxone. They continue to repeat it. So I'm like, just from my own knowledge, I'm like, well, what the heck is going on here, you know? Well, I did so, it. Yeah, I know. That's what I mean. So it, it's odd because from I, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I went th I went through school for six years and I, we studied obviously poison. A little weird, wouldn't you say? It's a little, a little strange. It's a, it's a little, it's a little weird. And um, you're you're completely correct in saying that buprenorphine can displace, uh, you know, pretty much any opioid. It's very, very powerful. Right. So it's it's just a, it's a little odd. I it's knew like a kind guy. of like a public. I don't know. Did we factor. go off? I don't remember to finish the story about the doctor, but he was pissed when you first told him if you took one of those, you'd fall on the floor. And I think he was in Cape Cod. High as a kite. Yeah, it was up in Cape I Cod. Remember. And he was like, you know, kind of put off a little bit by Mark's right. commentary. Well, I mean, supposing we went to with all the, 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 the dignitaries from the state law enforcement and when they were doing that right. whole conference and I looked around, I'm like, there's not a guy in this room that's ever taken this stuff. How can you be, how can you be an expert on the stuff without talking about the people that have taken it. I don't know. See, I'm a non-trusting person, so I don't know. I know there was a movie line in one of the Jason Bourne movies where he looks at the lady Pamela, Pamela Landy mm -hmm. and says, "Lady, you talk about this stuff like you read it in a book," and that's, that's exactly what you're yeah, talking yeah, about, yeah, right? They're they talking did. about this Absolutely. stuff like they read it in a book, and the reality but of based it is on a lot bad different. info. There you right? go, bad info, if bad the, intel, and then there's the reality of what it's intended to do and what benefits there could be and how it actually shows up on the street because an addict is going to take and manipulate and turn around and twist. And that let's talk about the reality of what they actually do with their scripts for subs when they get them, right? Like everybody knows what it is. You know, they'll be given and they'll leave and they'll be given their subscription for subs. Maybe they take them a couple few days. Subs have a value. Like in prison, that's how you get high. Listen, subs are what you get high on. That costs, right, right, how much right. was it, 10 bucks a strip or something like that inside of prison? Oh, inside of prison, it is. it's probably 50. Yeah, it might even be higher. 10 to 20. Uh, they, uh, 10 right. to 20 so I have street. a experience. I'm in a Suboxone and doctor's office and they don't know that I'm there because I'm friends with the doctor and I know the people and I'm not there to get right. subs and so the kid starts volunteering information to me he's like well I just come here to get my subs like, to be honest with you dude I don't really take them anymore he's like I haven't really taken them in years but they're worth 20 a strip on the street in Patterson right so, so they I, get them filled so and then they go sell them and they get money for so heroin common. and they go get so high common. Right. and I'm yeah. like yeah. really dude like, absolutely and that, and that's that's one of the downfalls of that, the fact that you can have somebody who is struggling with addiction, especially early, um, and get a whole month's supply of the stuff. Which, and by then, the way, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. So, you know, hey, insurance company, guess what? The drug makers are saying that this is a cure-all, and look how much of it they're selling. Well, a lot of the kids Diverted. are actually just taking it, and your money that's being paid for that prescription is actually being, you're, they're right. using it to buy heroin in the end right. because they're selling it out onto the street, and it's just a whole cottage industry that's taking place inside the addiction community. It's an insane drug from my personal guinea pig myself experience. Right. Like I was telling you earlier, the, the amount that people get prescribed, 16, 24, oh, that's 32 milligrams. Thing. That's I've had insane, pretty insane, yeah. monstrous dope habits, and I felt fine on the first four milligrams. Did I feel great? No, but I'm coming off of heroin. I'm not supposed to feel great. And the crazy thing about it is, like, they're over-prescribing this stuff, and the right. drug, you can taper down on your own, because I did that too, pretty quickly with zero discomfort. 
You stable on four, you can go to two milligrams two days can, later. Can, can can we let's not marginalize that? Like let's not let's not undersell that at all. I mean, I, I promise I promise May, I'm, I'll try not to curse on the thing, but I would say to the doctors that are out there, you know, what the fuck? Right? Like, like are you are kidding you me? So they have to go to some what? Is it a two day class to get the special DEAX I, I don't know the license to be hours, able to ten difficult. hours of yeah, training? I mean, though, right. if they want to go get be able to write and to be a drug dealer and they want to be able yeah. to write Suboxone. Now not all Suboxone doctors are like that, and some of them, you know, Suboxone in and of itself, it should be done in conjunct only in conjunction with treatment is really what it should be. Because yeah. in and of itself it's not gonna be effective anyway. But you've got kids that are going in there, and we know, we talk to these people. This is not, for us, this isn't theory. This is practical reality, and we have dealt with it over and over. Like, these, are, it's not, it's anecdotal. It's every day. It is anecdotal insofar as right. I don't have a, personally have a million experiences, but all the experience we do have, it's not just coincidental yeah. that these doctors. kids are going in, and they're on, like, maybe a, you know, a three bag a day habit, not three bundle Only a day, 30. but three bag a day habit, even 30. But I'm talking about the right. kids that are the lower line. They got, you know, they were taking pills. They get into heroin. They get scared. They come into yeah. detox it, or they go see their family doctor. Two 30 milligram blues a day. Right, there you right, go. Right, All right. right let's, yeah. let's call it that. They're taking two thirties a day, right? That's a, again, we don't know who's watching the podcast. Mm -hmm. Two 30 milligram blues of sub, one uh, in, oxycodone. of oxycodone, one in the morning and one at night. You pretty much stay numb for a good part of the day because you haven't built up the tolerance. And you, uh, withdrawal. Uh, yeah, yeah. You oh, no, withdrawal. Yeah, yeah. No question. You'll have withdrawals. Um, and so they now, they don't want to go to rehab. They don't want to go to detox because this is just what happens. Parents, you're watching this. Of course, they don't want to go to rehab and detox. Yeah, nobody wants and, to. And no, of no, course, no. unfortunately. Nobody wants to go to detox. But unfortunately, a lot of the parents don't want them to either because yeah. they don't, they're not drug addicts. They just happen to get into a bad thing. They go see a doctor and the doctor says, oh, no problem. We can write you a script for Suboxone and we'll help you get off of that. And they write them a prescription for six. 16 milligrams of Suboxone. 16 milligrams. The kid was taking two 30s a day. Literally two would hold. Two those. milligrams would have been just fine. And he's getting 16 milligrams. Now the kid is starting to foster a real drug habit because Suboxone, 16 yeah. milligrams taken over the long term, that kid is screwed. When he ever tries to come off of that, oh my God. Yeah, and he's yeah. high as a kite from the rip. Oh, too. no, that, he, he, just, he just upped himself. Yeah. So yeah. the curative, Monster he was power. like, wow, I should have done this a long time yeah, yeah, yeah. ago. Yeah. Sure, mom, I'll go back to that doctor again tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. Until that doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Either. Well, it'll wear off after a period off. of time. Well, we'll your tolerance don't. will go up and you won't feel high. You right, know, you right. won't feel high. But, but that's the other which thing. Is, I, which is which is the, the misconception, which is, the, the, and right. that's their argument. They're like, they don't get high on Suboxone. Right. And but then like, the question is, okay, do you want your surgeon being on 16 milligrams of Suboxone? Is he going to go in and perform yeah, heart no, surgery? No, no. It's a but do you want your pilot in the yeah. plane on yeah. 16 milligrams it's of Suboxone? A good question. But, and when your answer is absolutely not, why is it okay for my son? Yeah. Right, right. You know, but that's, now, that's or, the or right. anybody else. But now, mm -hmm. but now it's an interesting point because when you go when you go back to that and you look at that, you're giving somebody 60 milligrams of Suboxone, right? If they want to fall back on what their old drug was, so if it was 130 in the morning, 130 at night, oh, that's gonna not going to cut more. it. Oh, no. So now they're at touch even, it. Yeah, that's gonna, they're going to be at more of a risk for overdose and for experimentation for other things. So if you're not dosing it right, that's, that's extremely problematic. So sure. you have a, a person who comes... Uh, they, they want to take five or I, I need five now. Let me try six. Let me try seven. So you're fostering, like uh, Richie had said, a much, much worse addiction. And that's something where people can actually overdose accidentally from. So, And then uh, we should probably talk about like, it, what is the reason for this? Like nowhere in the history of treating addiction and alcoholism has it been the protocol for treating it has been giving them more of the same drugs and alcohol with an, with an expectation. You never tell an alcoholic, just drink two airplane bottles of vodka a day right. for the rest of your life. They would never do that. They would never say, "Here's a, a rock of crap." Well, but, but, but then let's call what it is. Let me. I'll. I'll I'll be devil's advocate. I'll play the other side for a second. The argument can be made, and it is. I believe it is a strong argument. It wouldn't work with alcohol, but with subs, from the research and from what they see happening, a lot of the heroin addicts at first, when they first come in and they start taking Suboxone, their their desire to go out and get heroin is reduced. Correct. Many of them do stay away from it for periods of time at the ones that are able to, usually it's because they have some support network that gives them the drugs right. every day and they do, and they do have that mindset of, I really don't want to be a heroin addict anymore. And they're taking it as prescribed. They actually do go back to work. They right. actually do take the kids to the park again. They're not out selling their paychecks and going out and buying. They're getting prescriptions. They're following the prescription the way if you had, 
cancer or whatever, any other drug. And they said, okay, you got to take one of these a day. And now they start growing their hair back and you start seeing them come back to life. Now, what kind of life? That's the ultimate question from us. Maybe they're good lives. We, Maybe. We, we're not going to get calls from those people. No. I'm not going to yeah. run into those people. I'm going right. to run into the ones that are that are dying and using other drugs or Agreed. dying to get off. But agreed. Right? But but we can't ignore the fact that we cannot say, see, that's the real issue here, I guess. I mean, this is even part of the right. reason I have one of these conversations. It really does get you thinking. And that's the issue. It's not a panacea. There is no cure all. Addiction strikes different people in different ways, and some people are able to maintain and, mo- and moderate in these ways, and other people absolutely cannot. When it comes to the people who can do that and go back to work, unfortunately, I've talked to them as well. And here's the real problem, and this is one of the you know things, and this is close to home for me. This is what hits at the heart. So I'm a recovery guy. I will concede the fact that some people, and I hate to do this, and I won't be the one to say who it is. I won't do it, and I'll tell you why. But I'll concede the fact that there are people who probably should be on long-term Suboxone. Yeah. Maybe right. forever. Maybe that's the best that they're ever going to hope to get and be. And make no mistake, they may be back in their kids' lives. And again, this is not something we read in a book, right? I mean, you know, you've been on it and we talk to thousands of kids. Like, I know what they go through. Like, we deal with it in the trenches every day. They may go back to work and they may get the relationship with the kids, but they're in a fog, When you're on those levels of Suboxone for long term, you may not feel high, but behind the scenes, you're on a drug that if anybody else was taking it, you'd be laid out on the floor. So now you're taking this maintenance and you're taking this very powerful drug every day so you can go to work. The connectivity you have with other human beings, the passion that used to that lights up people's lives, the ability to connect interpersonally is diminished hugely. Yeah, you can do the basic stuff like shower and go to work and pay your bills, and I guess that's good. It's great for the government who's looking for crime reduction and who wants the people to, you know, stop running around and right. being drug addicts on the street. But in the end, is that really is that the end goal? It can't be for me. I'm a recovery guy. I believe that you can have a different experience using <laughs> those things are as tools where if you do some real recovery work you can be taken beyond where you are you can recover in a way that is astounding where you don't need any drugs that recovery that's what recovery is in the outside recovery community i personally when it comes to like the 12-step work that i do on the side i won't to me if somebody's on suboxone i can't even like Doing 12 step work when you're on Suboxone is in, and it doesn't mean I'm right. It's just for me, I won't do it. Yeah, me Because you're still getting high every day. I mean, there's no, to us, we, and that's it. We understand it. Experience, experience, both my own and of everyone that I've seen, is it it hadn't worked for them. No. They tried it and it didn't work. They inevitably always got high at some point or picked back up whatever their original drug of choice was. That's what I've seen. I'm not saying it can't be. Over and over and over. It can't be everyone. I'm not so closed minded to think people that. There's just so many different things that I can't be closed-minded to thinking maybe for a lot of people that they have a different experience. But what I've seen is the experiences of myself and everyone, not just everyone I've seen, didn't work for them. Yeah. And, and again, and over and over and over, right. hundreds and, so, and hundreds and hundreds and even thousands of cases that you're talking about yeah. in practical mm-hmm. terms from what we see. And, and I have a theory. I have a theory on Ooh, this. I've hold been, on. Mark I have a, I have a has a fucking theory. <laughs> but think this that. is exciting. So, so you have to be. I think for even those that are successful, whatever that looks like, Yay. nailed it. I have Listen a feeling the, this theory is going to elicit yeah. that response, and I they, don't think. The, but the people that do well on Suboxone, <laughs> you have to be incredibly motivated to do well on Suboxone or abstinence-based recovery. But the difference yes. is, great point. Yeah. After a few months in on abstinence based recovery, you don't have to kick another drug. You're going to inevitably, most people aren't going to resign to taking this stuff for the rest of their lives. They're going to have to face the withdrawal at some point. But I think the motivation level has to be the exact same. Like I don't even think I think you're wrong. My experience was that being on Suboxone, as far as during my times taking it, did not, it did not cut down my cravings. It did not make me want to use real drugs any less. It didn't. It just made me not get sick. And I think if you ask a lot of people on Suboxone, you know, I don't think it cuts down their cravings. That's just not been my experience or anyone that I know. 
Yeah. They're just doing it for outside reasons. They're not really looking to get sober yet. I mean, that's been... The Again, is it I've possible seen. that for some people it cuts down cravings, whereas for other people it doesn't no, cut absolutely. down cravings? No, that, I mean, that all comes with... That's all part of the campaign that oh. the drug companies are putting out there. Oh, there's also a bunch of side benefits. Yeah. Like, it By cuts the way, down your cravings. Yeah. I mean, cutting down no, no. cravings, even with, with naloxone or with Vivitrol, are you, I wanted to get high more than ever on... I just couldn't. Well, so I didn't crave... I mean, I craved heroin. I just... Knew that I couldn't do it, so mm. let's. Well, so bo- so boxone is a thing that you know you're giving it every month, and you have to something like that really has to have intense dose monitoring. So a one size fits all is not the model here, and of course it can just maybe just feed the beast just a little bit to keep them off your back, but you still have that underlying mental obsession that's going on that it's not really going to treat at all, right? Which we kind of and that's and that's and that's Absolutely. getting down to causes and conditions yeah, 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 yeah. rather Absolutely. than just the physical yeah. aspects of desire versus withdrawal versus. Right. But I'm still not clear on. So your th- what what exactly is your theory? I mean, it didn't even sound like a theory. It sounds like just what it is. I, but I'm just re- well, restate the th- your theory. The theory, because I'm not a doctor and I don't have no, studies. Fair but the the theory, my theory is that you have to be ju- just as equally motivated for abstinence based recovery as you do to be successful in suboxone based yeah, recovery. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, right? I don't, I don't, you know. I so mean, then I, why are we pushing? If I'll just assist- concede that to you. If yeah. but that's if true. But why push? Medication assisted treatment as the as the curative. Really, at the end of the day, the person has to be just as equal. But again, I, I'll play sides. the other side of it. There is a reason when they're not motivated, at least on the medication assisted well, treatment. At thing. least on the medication assisted treatment, they may get to a point where they become motivated. As, but they're still not out there getting high okay. and maybe overdosing and dying Fine, on heroin. Right. So you can't pretend it doesn't play a fucking role because right. it does play a role. Okay, and I can't believe I'm taking the other side of the okay, argument. But, but I'm, glad, I'm glad you took the other side. But no. then why is it not always pushing Vivitrol, which at least gives 28 days? Because if you don't want to, if you're on suboxone maintenance and you want to get high tomorrow, you don't take the pill. Right. And you get high tomorrow. Yeah. Right. No, I mean, no, it doesn't I'm protect with you it. past a, a day. Yeah, I mean, I'm, listen, I'm with you. The, and, and a reason why Vivitrol, you know, they're not pushing it as much, obviously, it's just because of the, the, the pounds and pounds of data they have and i mean the, the initial thing was methadone and like richie had said the only thing really that it has extreme value in right or not the only thing but something that it has extreme value in is the the re-entry population so the, as richie had alluded to it's somebody who's been struggling their whole life they can't get sober at all so they're putting in that they're putting them on mat methadone and as of uh presently suboxone as well you're getting more studies with that um just so they can go about their lives so they're not going outside to rob a store or uh, you know, commit crimes. And also... It, but if it, that's what the prisoner wants to do, they're going to stop taking the stuff yeah, and go do it. I know, I mean, but... It, it, I, why is that But it just it increases so their chances, though, Mark. That's the thing. Yeah, it's a percentage that, thing. It just increases... Not all of them. Some are compulsory. They do it. But if they're given some of this kind of help, the argument would make it's just a percentage game. Instead of 80% running out and doing that, right. you're right. Maybe 60% of them will, but maybe that other 20 are people we can save that's by... I'm just... That's okay, the okay, argument. Yeah, that's, that's the argument. And, and they not, do that. Statistics. And, they yeah. do have and statistics right. and it's it's, it's yeah. not only MAT. Then it makes sense. So but. it's not only just solely MAT. So if you look at like Rhode Island, for instance, what they're doing, Rhode Island was giving MAT mostly methadone and suboxone, sometimes Vivitrol for uh, uh, prisoners that were being released. It wasn't a soft handoff. They set up all these centers of excellence, so there was a follow up with care. So they would give the methadone as they're leaving, follow them up. They would have a doctor's appointment right to go to right away as soon as they got out, and they did see a reduction in overdose deaths. Right. So and, and from that end, that's that's great because you're decreasing what time period for for one, for a half year period. It was it was statistically okay. significant. I mean, it was, you know, uh, I thought it was a lot less, but I actually just looked six months, six months. right? Yeah. Yeah. It was actually it was statistic, uh, statistically significant. So you can yeah, kind of look at harder stats. overdose when you're taking. Of course. Know, right? But, uh, but again, sure. no, no, of course, of course. Absolutely. But, um, you know, it comes it, it becomes I think the main point of the argument is. You know, if, if MAT is available and it's it's legal and it, it's FDA approved or whatever the case, when do you start it? When is the prime period to start it? Right. So, okay, uh, so hold on. Right. Na- you- na- if you name me the drug czar, let's say I was named drug czar and I got uh, to make the ultimate decision in the United States, this is how we're using this drug. Forget about the insurance companies, the pharmaceutical companies, who's making money, how it's supposed to all work, your opinion on it, my opinion on it, all have valid arguments to make some much less valid than others in my practical opinion, but whatever. If I'm the drug czar, this is what I'm, and, and again, I'll, you guys can each play drug czar for a second, but for me, when people go into detox, they have good detox protocols for all drugs in place now. We work with a lot of detoxes. They've got that down pretty well. They can take all the chemicals safely out of your body. If if Suboxone is used as part of that protocol in a lot of the detoxes, that's fine. 
That's what you'll use it for. And then depending on the level of your addiction, how much you've used, how long you've used it, whatever, I'll allow you to be on Suboxone on a wean, on a taper for an extended period of time for another two weeks or three weeks. So maybe you actually leave detox on four because you really needed to take 16. I don't know that anybody ever needs to take 16, but eight. You leave detox on four. We let you go to two to one to half to quarter. And then eventually you get down to zero. When you're getting to the point where you're down to zero, we have the naltrexone pills as that three-day buffer because I don't believe you can take Vivitrol while you still are no, you gotta right have on the sub. Seven to fourteen days. Seven to fourteen. With suboxone longer because longer. But, but can you take the naltrexone pills? No, at, no, no. So you, you, cannot, can't you can't take anything. anything. No, you're going to have a gap whether you're just. Empty. So herein lies yes. the issue and problem, right? right. And so it's going to have to be done then to be really effective. This is all going to have to be done in. A rehab setting. Yes. Like there's no other way. Letting them do it out on the street, if you have, if they're if a serious problem of the mind that's going to take them back to it, and we know the nature of addiction, especially in this type of addiction, it would have to be in a rehab setting, mm -hmm. which means 28 day stays are out the fucking window because they're not effective anyway. Right. Most people need to be there 45 days, two months, maybe even a little longer, depending on the nature of their problem and the kind of treatment that's actually being uh, employed. But now that 14 day period takes place in the detox. Right. Now they're safe, protected. They've been weaned off. The 14 days goes by, so they're able to take the naltrexone pill to make sure that they're that they're okay to take Vivitrol. Now we know they don't have an adverse reaction. Now you start planning what their aftercare is going to look like. Again, being the drugs are, I'm going to say you can't go back home. You can't go in an apartment. I want you to go into some type of supportive housing with the professionals that you're kind of given freedom. Go back out and work and get butt. You're still living with sober people. There's a, a degree of structure in place where you know, a sober living home, something to that effect for a period of time while you're on your Vivitrol. While you're doing all that, it's assumed, as I'm having this mm -hmm. conversation, during all of this, you should be engaging in recovery activity, right? Because you need to have an experience. Yeah. You've got to have that internal right. shift where you've got to be able to find a way or somebody's got to help you to find that path where you have a shift where you no longer want to go back to use that right. stuff anymore. Now, that's the big – how does that happen? Well, we we yeah, know we what we believe, but – We glazed, we glazed o over it earlier that, that even MAT in all forms just treats the body and – we believe that it's a mind, body, spirit thing. And really, the problem is meant. It's a mental. It's a that's mental. It. Disorder. And there's no pill you're going to give that's going to make that go away. Hasn't Period. Yeah, it's not going right. to do it now. So you're talking so about just one third of the thing, and it's important, and the physical aspects of it do need to be dealt huge, with. Huge. But in the end, that in and of itself is not going to solve the opioid yeah, crisis. Ask any person you know. who's had a problem with drugs or alcohol, like, legit, and if, if just getting sober and stopping kept them stopped. Yeah, of course. It just doesn't it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So problem. if we could and, and I wanna go back to and it brings us back to and and my point earlier that I made, which and I still stand by it, um, I do see the I I, I see when 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 we talk about who should be on, I, I alluded to some people probably would just benefit from being on long term subs. They might be constitutionally incapable of grasping and developing a manner of living which recovery might require and maybe some people for various reasons just not going to get it they won't you know i'm not going to be the one to decide who gets it yeah who, who makes the decision What's i the can't make that decision dude right. i want to believe I've, that everyone has a shot I've at met, rock I've, star lifestyle i've literally rock met, star I've lifestyle. met people that have been to detox a hundred and five times yeah and now have years of abstinence recovery yeah. so literally 105 yeah. times i thought i went a dude, lot dude most people would have given up on you what you went through in yeah, your yeah. life, and they would have given up, written you off. You're a rock star. So right. don't tell me, like, I, I've met people that I've literally, right. and I hate to admit this, but I'll be completely honest. I've met people in my recovery life in 22 years. I've met a bunch of people that after spending a little time with them, I've said to myself, no shot. Zero chance. We are, this yeah, kid yeah. will inevitably end up either dead or in prison for a long period of time. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to turn my back for, on the guy. I've, I've on the outside of this, I've tried to help people, you know, in, in, in recovery lifestyle ways. And, but I'm saying to myself the whole time, zero chance. One of those kids I'm thinking of particularly right now is, and you know who it is, Mark Q., is astounding. I mean, that kid is beyond rock star. And I would have written him off many, many years ago. And he is amazing. 
So there are examples of that. Who am I to decide? Who is anybody? Who's the government? Who's an insurance company? Right. Who's an insurance company to decide that I'm going to write this kid off? I can't be the one to do it. I won't be. I'm not saying that there's not people that wouldn't benefit from well, literally yeah. being and on now, long-term suboxone. And, 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 but, and now it brings into something else that I can't stand that I've seen change with what we all do in this industry. Like what happened to the your best thinking got you here? <laughs> that What happened to the your best thinking ment- got you here mentality to now – it seems to be there's this shift of asking the person in day three of detox, what do you think you need for recovery? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's what happened. Yeah. When did that change take place? <laughs> yeah. And if right. you offer me Suboxone in detox, I'm taking it Absolutely. every time, yeah. Absolutely. especially for a guy in a lab coat who I typically would trust is telling me that this is your answer. I'm like, okay, done. Yeah. Like, why is it, it's just mind blowing stuff. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it gets me so angry. Yeah. I, I just, and mm. yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what, what both of you are saying. And I think that also, that, you know, there's a major problem also with MAT that is not really talked about. Uh, in, we, re- we can reduce a lot of harm by telling people they shouldn't use drugs. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> but Nancy Reagan did that back yeah. in the 80s. And, and by it the didn't way, work, I'll be out, you know. did it? Just say no. We, we have a, I, I know, but at least there was something. What's yeah? What's yeah somebody's yeah. coming out. Yeah. What is anybody doing today? Now, I mean, now it's been a little different the past year or so because of the opioid epidemic. But what's right. the national level of, like, what, what's the what, what's the what's the fighting uh, cry? What's the there is no tagline. There's, yeah, there's no, no. Fair enough. Like, you know this what? This stuff's going to change. It, it, listen, eventually. It's, it's, sorry it's not the same. No, 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 no. It's, no, and it's, it's good, not good, the same. It's question. weird you say that. It just came up into my mind. And again, we're we're going to wrap it up soon because we can go. Listen, we could go on yeah, and on yeah, and on. Yeah, it's but, huge but, topic. But, yeah, it's Joe a huge Rogan topic. And, and then, but but <laughs> but I'll tell you that it's weird because I was sitting talking to my ten year olds, my twins last night, and we were just sitting around chatting, and and I said something to them. And I just said it out of the blue, and I don't know why. And and it speaks in a weird way to what you're talking about, which is where we are as a society, as a country, as families, right? Prevention, this kind of thing. And one of the things that I said to them out of the blue, I just was sitting there. And how old are you? You're in your early 40s, right? And how old are you? You're young. Yeah, you're a child. Um, Kevin, how old are you, bro? 33. So you two (laughs) might not know, but you might. But you might remember from when you were a wee lad. You ever remember this? It's 10 p.m. You yes, you know where your children, are. Your yeah, children yeah. Just, are. Yep. And I said that out loud in front of my kids, and they both looked at me and said, Dad, what are you talking about? And I said, well, back when Daddy was a kid, they used to the TV at 10 o'clock before the news mm-hmm. would go, boo, it's 10 stuff. p.m. And they were like, well, why did they do that? I said, well, that's a good question. I said, I think they did it just to remind families, like, hey, you've right. got some kids out there. Do you know what they're doing right. and where they're at and right. what they're up to? The you may pan, want to go to the, the front. Pan brain on yeah. drugs yeah, yeah, commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one I always saw growing up, which I thought I think is still poignant today, which was like, I never wanted to be a junkie when I grew up. That's what they said on the oh, thing. Yeah, it was like a neither. commercial of a track star in high school, and it kind of morphed into running from the cops and being tackled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I didn't do My goal was not to end Dude, up. <laughs> two, yeah. o'clo- two o'clock in the morning, I'm in my apartment, and I'm wasted, geeked out, fucking three eight balls deep with a bottle of Jack, and I'm sitting on my couch like this, <laughs> and all of a sudden the commercial comes on, and I have the TV on, and, I'm, and I hear, are you high right now? Oh and I'm my like, God, I would have what? Lost my you know mind. what I mean? You're sitting right now in your living room, and I'm like, oh my God! Like, that's, that's brutal. But you know, and I'll take that even one step further, so you're like, holy shit, you turn the TV off, of course. Now you go to the bathroom and I go and I'm looking in the mirror in my bathroom and I'm bringing this up only because it's, it's, this is what we're dealing with. When I say we, I mean, we as a society, the people and the well intention, not all bad intention, well intention, politicians, people trying to get a handle on this opioid crisis, all these kids that are dying. But what we're dealing with is that my whole life had gone to shit. I'm sitting in my brother's apartment. He's away working on the tugboats for weeks at a time. I'm, I'm done. My parents threw me out. No one would have me in. I dropped out of college. All my friends have gone on to graduate and go to school and get married. And everyone's like living real life, but I'm an addict. And I'm sitting there wasted alone at two o'clock in the morning. I get out of the bathroom and I look in the mirror and I see me with black fucking eyes, not having slept for three days. I'm like this. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror. And the thought when you're an addict and you're in it, like so you'd, I'd love to be able to say that I looked and I had this moment of clarity where I was like, "This, I can't live like this anymore. I looked at myself and the way I processed was just kind of like, well, you know, this is me. I mean, I'm an addict. What are you going to uh, do? Like, yeah. this is what it is. And I got to do it as best I can and go on as long as possible. Yeah, it yeah. didn't occur. Like a normal person looks at that and goes, what are you doing? What are you thinking about? 
what do you mean? You know what I mean? Like, what's the problem? Right. You know, I've still got some left. It seems and that. That's yeah. crazy, right. but yeah. that's that's and, the reality. And, do you write me off? Like, am I somebody to be to be written off? Like, I can't, you know, again. No, but you would have went into rehab as an alcohol uh, alcoholic and a cocaine user. And they this said, is what I did. We can, only, we can only suggest to you abstinence. Oh, but John, you're using opiates. <laughs> we have a pill for you. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's yeah. Still, yeah, and yeah. there's another thing that kind of blows Absolutely. my mind today. Yeah. Right, Absolutely. right, right. So, all right. Um. Do you guys want to leave off um, with any, like, kind of last-minute kind of something to think about, something to consider, a final thought, uh, a shout-out to somebody if you can't think of anything cerebral to say? I yeah. know. Yeah, say hi to your mom. That's cool. She will share, and she will watch this. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure she will. Uh, no, I mean, just a, just a heads-up, I guess, to the, the federal courts and, um, you know, everything that they had done for me. And they and they did it right. Oh, wait. So, yeah. Before you give your final, we cut him off more than anything, but right. you make us think when you talk. <laughs> That's one of the things. One of the things we never did talk about, and it's worth extending this thing for just a minute or two, as you're giving a shout out to the fucking federal court system. But I will say this: one of the things that is outlandish, and I'm speaking to the federal and state court systems, and I'm asking you guys, what the fuck are you thinking about? We know kids that are in jail, abstinent for a year in prison about to get released and as part of the release program you know what they give them 16 milligrams of suboxone so they don't get high on heroin when they leave that's insane whoever came up with that rule you are a moron that is insane you got him wasted high on sit mark if you haven't taken anything for a year and they give you a 16 how high are you the day that you're ready to leave from prison oh my god and this is going on. We have kids that come in t- with us that we, you know, they're right, in the court yeah, yeah. systems well, and the count- the they're mandating is, the that they take this shit. The, the, the amount of overdoses the day or within the week of leaving prison are extremely high. And that's why they're, still, do- that's why they're right. doing it. But again, Vivitrol. then, but then, yeah. okay, fine. Vivitrol is a much better answer because you can give them all the Vivitrol shot and you won't have those overdoses within three days of leaving prison. It'll right. at least be 27. And if you're going to do it right, give them the Vivitrol and then give them a five follow up for a second Vivitrol shot so they at least have the opportunity but by giving them the Suboxone you're just basically it's just total nonsense you're restarting the process for them again because if I'm clean a year now and you're forcing me to take get high and wasted high the day before I leave prison you're not doing anybody any fucking favor there was an interesting article that just came out from uh, about three days ago about somebody in Rikers Island who said you can either be in jail or you can take your addiction medicine and the guy was like I don't want to take anything and he was in jail for six months so you got to read this article if you got to. I'm not going to go into the depths of it, but read, read, uh, touch. Well, the, tell them where is the article. People like can, to read you can, this you, stuff. I, I do don't you know the it? whole website. I don't know the website. Do you um, know the name of the article or what it's called? Yeah, it's what said, would um, be the keywords. It was like it, it, Rikers Island. Yeah, Rikers. It said Rikers Island prisoner. Um, either takes medicine or stays in jail or forced to stay in jail. That's what the, the Google that I'll do. Yeah, it Google that. Go it's a, it's a very interesting it article and it kind of piggybacks into that where basically, you know, Rikers Island, they have a very long standing, long running methadone program. And yeah. They really yeah. Push many, 20, yeah. 30, and this 40 is, years. Yeah. Yeah. Time. Very, very long. And, um, you know, this, this gentleman didn't want to take, you know, any MAT and he was left behind bars, which I think is just insane to even do that to somebody. The yeah. person but who came up with that rule, or, we yeah. have a special button yeah, for them. Fired. That's it. <laughs> yep. It's old Uncle Don. Does that thing translate? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, all right, so we were signing yeah, off. No, no, you no, wanted no. to I'm, give a shout out to the yeah, federal well, government. The federal courts, yeah, because I, I mean, the, the, the program that they had put into place, I think they finally came to their senses, you know, with the mandatory minimums of the 80s and the draconian sentences. And if you had a little bit of crack, you were going to prison for years and years and years. Well, they and may want to talk to the people in Pennsylvania about MSM. I know, no, yeah, that, that, that's, we that's covered crazy. that already. Yes, yes. Wow, 21 years no, for giving your friend drugs. I know, that's drugs. It's insane. It's insane. So, I mean, but the, the court program that, that they, they had set up really encompassed everything, right? They had, if they had people on MAT, they worked with them. Um, it, this is not just an addiction issue or, or a substance issue. It's a whole issue uh, from social services to mental health, as I mentioned before, education. Um, these are things that often put, set people up for failure if they, do, they if they haven't obtained, which they generally don't. Just working in reentry, I had people behind bars for years. They'd come to our office with literally a bag, uh, just like a bag of oh, shoes. Yeah, and nothing. Nothing. And I'm like, okay, wh- where's your uh, where's your ID? He's like, I, I don't have an ID. Okay, do you have a birth certificate? Nope. Literally just a faceless person. And now we have to, it's no wonder why recidivism is so high. It's not only just because of the drug abuse. Yeah, what are they supposed to do? Uh, of course. So, I mean, you know, the, the way the federal court, uh, the, the pretrial opportunity program sort of uh, molded their program, 
it, and it, it helped out with all of those things, which is what needs to happen. It's not just MAT, see you later. MAT, okay, uh, don't come back or whatever it is. You have to treat everything, everything, everything. It's a whole comprehensive issue. And by the way, the reason that this is such a huge topic and we're in a national state of emergency, and this is sad to say, but human nature is human nature and people are people and it is what it is. Back in the day, this conversation would have been about this kind, this person in society, which is people in prison, right. prisoners, chronic uh, criminals, and yada yada. And this whole conversation would be taking place over here. And maybe the mainstream wouldn't even like, oh, that's interesting. Yep. But now heroin has broken through yeah. the veil of that and gone throughout all society. These are high, the best, yep. the rich, the poor, the the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the yeah. cultural b barriers. There are no barriers to heroin yeah. addiction, and it's now gone to the full gambit. Yes. So that's why this is a national conversation, yeah. even a global conversation now, because this isn't just about no, no, that. No, yeah, yeah. This, you're talking about one Prison. slice right. of an overall. I, it's yeah, that's the I, I want to also say this. If you look at, there's an old advertisement, right, from 1996, Purdue Pharma, and they're like, Oxycontin, when it came out, Oxycontin. It's going to save lives. And here are eight testimonials. And it's all these business people. They're like, yeah, I had a chronic back problem. And on the bottom, it says the name like Joe Schmo. And it says how many milligrams of Oxycontin they're taking. Some of them are 80 milligrams a day. And I'm like, that's insane. No wonder why they seem yeah. so happy. Yeah. They're, like, they're sitting behind the desk and they're, and they're like, oh, uh, yeah, I, I, can, I, can, uh, I can go to work every day. My back feels great. You follow those people. All right. Oh, Literally. Yeah. There's, docu like the there's a documentary. Yeah. yeah. Two of them died. One person had a master's level degree. She's homeless on the streets now. And she's like, yep. it just went out of control. Yep. And even more recently, there was a drug called Subsys, right? Which was a fentanyl sublingual spray. And there was a whole uh, thing on American Greed about nasal, it. Nasal, it, wasn't it? Nasal? Yeah, those guys. Yeah, no, there's nasal, but there's also, this was a sublingual. So there was two doctors that were like paid off by the drug company. And there was a woman who had just gotten surgery and she was prescribed subsys, which is insane yeah, because you have to be whole. opioid tolerant for that thing. That's for cancer patients. Patients that can't swallow or can't move, you can help them open their mouth and spray a little bit under their tongue. That way they're, you know, they have a, a dignity when they're dying and stuff like that. A woman that just had surgery was now using this thing multiple times a day and she's, she's she didn't even understand withdrawal. Right, right. She had no education. So it, it's, it's also, you know, the other facet where we're giving these drugs and we're not educating patients. I mean, it's really a lot of it is motivated by greed, which is disgusting. Yeah. Seriously, if you get a chance, check out the, the Purdue Pharma. They, they have them on YouTube. And it's it's like a nice little documentary. And then you follow those lives later on, all destroyed. And it's it's so, so sad, man. It, it, it's terrible. All right. I'm going to leave it like this. And I want to just one final thought as we go out. And it's a weird way to end it. But I want to end it because I know that we're going to get, first of all, you can get this podcast on the major streaming platforms, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And I want to say that when people go and they start commenting on everything, because we get a lot of comment back and forth and this one listen this is a hot topic a hot button topic because people feel very passionate about it if you think suboxone is a curative and it is good for long term well you're just wrong but um the, there are people who will come and they'll talk about how you know uh invariably even though we're not really talking we've been made mention to the need for painkillers and oxycontin right. and this and perks and how it starts there and yada yada there's always people who come on to a thing no matter what the topic is saying you know some of us need long-term pain medications yeah, yeah. and you Agreed. know it's ridiculous we agree with you we're not saying that this is for we're talking about drug addicts and drug addiction and if you're somebody sitting home and when you hear this you're thinking this is ridiculous and you're getting defensive my sponsor used to tell me if somebody says something that makes you angry, you may want to take a look at what right. they're saying. Just saying, because if you're getting that defensive about it, we're really not talking about you. If you're taking it for legit reasons, long term for pain management or successful, that's fine. I want to see those. But, but and they're, me not, too. they're not long term but, pain options anyway. Well, they're but, not, but yeah. there you go. And then yeah, that's I, about, we're yeah, not going to go there. I, I agree, but, yeah, but we're not going to go but, there. But, but, but I, I said period. that as an aside, yeah. but I also want to say to the people that are on longer term subs that are watching this that are Please doing well in. good for you i'm glad yeah. i we we love I'm, I'm here for the addict we have your back a thousand percent if it's working well for you i would pause it and give the consideration of well for you in what way like what do you consider well if you would ask me when i first came in to get sober okay describe yourself in five years where would you want to be i would have undersold myself by a, just a gargantuan, Herculean undersale of what actually happened in my life. So my question is like, 
I'm glad that you're not getting high and I'm glad it's working for you and you got your family back and your kids back and that's what I hope for you. I mean, I really do. I mean, that's we, we want to see people get well and convalesce and to experience life and to, to get through to the other side. And so our thing to you is if it is working for you, then that's awesome. We're not, I'm not saying that no one should be on it. If, if you listen to what we were saying here today, we're saying that we're not saying that by any stretch. I'm just not going to, we're not going to be the ones to say you're never going to make it in an abstinent base where you can actually have life come back on fire rock star you're again. Not. And you're going to have to take this long-term drug. We're not going to be the ones to say it, but no. for those that it is working for, listen, anything's Great, better yeah. than the way we used to live. No, and I, speak I, I and please. So yeah. And we yeah. want, I want like to hear to from you too. Positive testimonials. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Not we don't we don't see a lot of studies it. by the drug company. Absolutely, no, they obviously so. can't be trusted. No. So. Yeah, I agree. All right, that. so um, John, thank you, thank you. and Thanks Mark, thank you, and uh, thank you. You know, it wasn't as uh, as crazy as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be kind of. Sometimes we can get a little vicious and crazy with it. Next time we have one of these, maybe if we get like people who comment back, we'll get a proponent for it to come in here, and we'll just we'll, we'll just do it out with somebody. Um, I think it's a great. Do it in a ring. Yeah, cool. Put it in a ring. Right. There you go. All right, we'll check you next time. Thank you. Thank you.